tell you what I believe. If I am a rabbi, Jehovah is my God. If a mullah, Allah the merciful is he. If a Christian, Jesus is my Lord. Here in Tresor, I believe the old religion of the Celts. Very privileged to be joined by Robin Hardy, um, eminent director, probably best known, who will always be known, I guess, for The Wicker Man. And Robin has just, after many years, how many years is it now, Robin, uh, since you made the, the, the Wicker Man? Because you're just returning to the theme. <coughs> it's more than 30 years. More than 30 years, yeah. What, what brought you back to those, the, that theme at this moment in time? Was there a particular uh, trigger for that? Well, there are uh, two triggers, really. First is I've always wondered why no one had ever tried to do uh, the genre we did in The Wicker Man. Right. Um, and when I say the genre, it was a mixture of um, humor, mm -hmm. a romance, yeah. um, eroticism, uh, jokes, and ultimately horror. major horror. Yeah. Um, and no one had, no one has. I mean, I can't think of another film I mean, which has attempted to do that. So it had become a kind of genre of its own. <laughs> and when it happened that uh, the remake came up, yes, I was very curious to see whether they were going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no reason why they shouldn't have been able to do that. The United States uh, has wonderful uh, folk songs. Uh, yeah. from the Appalachians, which, which would have fitted him perfectly Absolutely, well. Yeah. Uh, they cast a wonderful actor in Nicolas Cage, who I've always thought was an extremely good character actor. Um, and uh, uh, they cast uh, a writer-director who's been very successful in mm -hmm. the theater yeah. and who I admire. Yeah. Uh, and somehow they just threw all the babies out with bathwater. Yes, very much. No comedy. It's missed it. The music was Muzak, really, wall-to-wall -wall Muzak. It could have been an elevator. Uh, the, um, the comedy wasn't, unless you count uh, poor uh, Nicholas rolling down a hill in a, bear, in a, in a monkey suit. <laughs> with unintentional comedy. Uh, and this swapping of genders, where all the males mm -hmm. were made females for no particular yeah. reason, and vice versa, uh, it seemed to be a complete disaster. I, I mean, uh, to this day, I have no idea what went wrong, except for they had about 27 producers, That's what he's and that would wrong. do it. <laughs> but uh, it's almost, in, in an article that I've written recently for Empire Magazine, uh, I've suggested that Tony Schaffer, who is now up there with the great script writers in the sky, right, of course, uh, yes. had cursed <laughs> yes. poor Nicholas and cursed poor uh, writer-director. the first time that's happened. And, and the curse has stuck wonderfully, um, and they produced the remake of The Wicker Man. Yeah. There's, there's no other explanation. I, I mean, you know, you, the, the ch the, I guess the charitable interpretation would obviously, Labute's written a lot about women and about, uh, what he, he seems to have his issues with women, and it was almost like he we was have trying to- We have with gender well, generally. Gen well, yes, gender generally, let's, mm -hmm. be, let's, be, really, let's be more detailed about it. But he, maybe he was trying to put his own stamp on it, and it, it didn't really come off, because he didn't. It struck me as being an odd studio project that brought him on. Well, yeah. except you see, funnily enough, the studio has all turned it down. Ah, so it ended up it, being the it, it belonged, to, it belonged the, the property still belongs to Canal Plus in France. Right. And they had a sister company called Universal. Right. And uh, Nicholas Cage said he'd always wanted to play the role of Howie. Um, and so uh, it was very quickly set up, and, and uh, Labute was commissioned to write the script. Right. And, and uh, no one liked the script. Right. So they then took it around uh, L.A. to try and find a, a producer, and they ended up with 27 producers. Right. Because it seemed like a good idea to make another version of a film that had they, never been successful. Well, they always do, yes. yes. So uh, it, it was born out of a whole series of really unfortunate impetuses. Uh, and um, I'm sorry it didn't work. I mean, you know, it would have been, I would obviously it would have been a compliment mm -hmm. uh, to what we had done if it had. And I'm not against remakes. I mean, I think the remake of the Thomas Crown Affair yeah. was brilliant. I mean, I, I like it as, as much as I like the first. It's, it's so it, it can be done. No, I was just about to say, it, it's perhaps a compliment to, to the original film, but it was so difficult to replicate that kind of mixture of, of styles. And that brings me on, I, I guess, to, to The Wicker Tree, because this is you revisiting it um, with 
a very different angle because I know it came from uh, a novel you wrote, I believe, um, called Cowboys for Christ, which I, I really kind of, I'm sorry it's not called Cowboys for Christ as a title, I like the title, but that's, and this is about, this is about some country, am I right, it's about some born again country, country singers who come to this, come to this country? Well one of them is a born again Christian. Born again Christian, yeah. Country singer, and uh, uh, the, the other is um, a cowboy, just a cowboy. Which really. a cowboy. Uh, her boyfriend. And right. They met together when they were about 15 years right. of age and in high wage school. Types. Yeah, and, uh, and she's probably made about $50 million at right. you know, since she oh, was okay. 15, and, and they're about 20 now, and they, they decide to do something for God. Right. And, and they're nice, sincere uh, people. They're not uh, screaming fundamentalists, okay. you know, but they uh, obviously sincere believers. And they walk right into uh, the trap that was mm. laid for them, very much as how he did in the first yes. film. Um, and we spend the film having to get, get, get out again. Right. Um, and um, I won't tell you <laughs> what happened, but <laughs> that's, 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 that's the, 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 the basis of it. And along the line, we have a lot of fun. Right. Uh, and the idea is to amuse, mm -hmm. titivate, um, and ultimately horrify, having used a lot of music, a lot of say, really lovely songs. Right, because um, you, you, you've got a country singer from you've got a country singer from the states, and you presumably I'm guessing. No, well, in fact, the country singer from the states is not a country singer from the states. She's yeah. she's a nice English girl well, I mean, who plays country. country I girl. guess the character. <laughs> yes, and that's right. The music yeah, have yeah, no, you're right. You're absolutely so right. You're, but you're bringing because you, when you're saying before about the um, the Wicker Man remake about all the great American folk and country music. And was, was, was that part of the plan to bring American folk music into this British folk music environment and have this kind of interest? Almost well, like a, well, like the a reason, duel of music. The it? reason for bringing Americans into it is yes. because they were suddenly being tr transposed into entirely alien society. Exactly, yeah. The kind of things that would have ma raised the suspicions of an Englishman person yeah. or a Scot. They wouldn't notice. They didn't notice. Uh, I mean, ultimately, the cowboy does notice. Yes. Because he's less um, exposed to fame than right. she has been. And she's been, you know, spent her life in hotels like Hilton's and mm. Four Seasons and things like that. So she's a bit unworldly. She's a bit unworldly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so uh, she's um, a better mark Yes. Than than he is. Right. Yeah. He's a bit sly. He's a bit more fly and a bit more. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, no. he knows that there's nothing that's special about him. He can ride a horse. Yes. So why are they so yeah. keen on him? You know. Ah. Right. Okay. So he, he just feels yeah. yeah. There's something going he on. He smells a ref. What tends to happen with the, with with the Wicker Man is people see it as being a horror movie, whereas there are other elements within. It becomes it goes and it gradually and actually becomes horrifying. But there's a lot of humour and a lot. You've said that about this film, but you try to emphasize the humor more. In, in well, it's part of it because I think it's a bigger shock right. for the audience. If it goes dark when it's funnier. Yes. Yes, I, I know what you mean. It yes. leads people. Well, when you entertain them and they think, what a lovely society. Now, the yeah. other thing that I do think is important is both in The Wicker Man and in The Wicker Tree, we're uh, involved in a society which didn't have as its main religious precept right and wrong. Yes. It's. it's um, if you give to the gods sufficiently mm. the yes. right kind of thing, you yeah. will get what you want. Right. Not necessarily right, not necessarily or, wrong. Or, but the gratification of it, yes. desire. Yes, exactly. All right. And we don't necessarily get that from our god. Oh, glorious son, accept our sacrifice that we may be fruitful once again. <laughs> 